Hi everyone, welcome back to this episode of Beholding podcast with me, Sese Peresu. I'm super excited to be back with another episode. And thank you so much for tuning in week after week. And if you just joined us, welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, Sese Zai Peresu, but please call me Sese. So today's topic is called Press In. Somebody say Press In. Okay, we're not in church. <laughs> um, so during one of my daily encounters recently, I was praying, 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 you know, keeping it cute, keeping it cute. And um, I heard God say to me, why are you so content with the outer court? Press into my presence. And this is one thing that God has continuously been putting on my heart and my mind and challenging me to do, which is to press in deeper into his presence. And just to kind of break it down, in the Old Testament, they had the tabernacle, and the way that it was structured was such that there was an old, there was an outer court, an inner court, and then the furthest in you could go was the holiest of holies, the most holy place. And so the outer court was for the women, you know, the children, um, the Gentiles, you know, just people. The outer court was for the general assembly, basically. It was just for the public. That's what the outer court was. And then the inner court was the place where the priests could could go. And then the holiest of holies was set apart for very specific chosen people who could enter in there to meet with God on behalf of the general public, on behalf of all the people. And so... um, God was painting this picture of saying, okay, so you, back in the old day, they could just enter, anyone could go into the outer court, right? And um, that was okay. And there was a veil that separated the outer court and the inner court. And there was another veil that separated the inner court and the holiest place, right? And what happened when Jesus died on the cross is that the veil was literally torn, the veil was torn and this was symbolic of that Jesus was that his flesh was the veil being torn and the actual veil in the temple was torn because he was allowing us access into the holiest of holies by the blood of the lamb. And so now as children of God, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and savior, when we confess with our mouths and believe in our heart, that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, you know, and we become children of God. We receive that spirit of adoption by which we can cry out, Abba, Father, when we are redeemed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, we can enter in to the inner court and more so even we can enter into the most holy place. This place was so sacred not anyone could go in this is where the altar of god was the the ark of the sorry this is where the ark of the covenant was this is where the manifested presence of god dwelt and even back in 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 i have to i should have prepared the scripture but i know that when they were transporting the ark um when david had them bring the ark back i think it was falling off the wagon or something like that and someone touched the ark just to kind of like balance it to save it from falling and touching the ground and that person died that's the intensity of the manifested presence of God that not anyone could just touch it and live not anyone could just go into that place and so why I'm setting this scene is because I want to always be in awe and reverence of the fact that this thing that was so sacred that no one could just be granted access, I now am freely given access to encounter God in his manifested presence just because of the blood of Jesus. And one thing God said to me was, The veil was torn. Why are you still hanging out in the outer court? You're no longer a Gentile. You're no longer an orphan. Why are you still hanging out in the outer court? 
And you know what's crazy is that sometimes that's what religion does. It causes us to stitch back the veil together and to hang it up ourselves when God has torn it down, when God has made a way for us to enter into the holiest of holies. Let me take a breath because I'm getting passionate. (laughs) But friends, friends, Don't allow anything. Don't allow the lie of the enemy. Don't allow your own insecurities. Don't allow ignorance. Don't allow a lack of knowledge to keep you from the sacred intimacy that we have with the creator of the universe. I was singing um, a song earlier and one of the words in the song is, well, part of the song is calling out and praising God by way of his name, Yahweh. Right, and I was singing and singing Yahweh, na, 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 Yahweh, and it just dawned on me that this name that I'm saying is so sacred that even the the Jewish people don't say it. That's how sacred it is when they read that word, and in another word they use for it because they can't say the actual word is Adonai. But us as Christians, we know that we can cry out to him. We can call out to him. We can say Yahweh. And that's the same attitude. We can come into the holiest of holies. Not because we are perfect. Not because there's anything great that we've done. But because of the blood of Jesus. And it's so... It's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful thing to have that access to the one who created us. He longs for that intimacy. He's calling out to us. He's pursuing us. He's saying, come into the holiest of holies. Come and behold. Come and behold me. And as you behold me, you become more like me. Everything else falls away. Everything else falls away and I become your heart's desire and you start to desire more and more and more of me. And that's why we need to lay aside every single weight. We need to lay it aside because this is the intimacy that we are called to. This is the intimacy that we are called to. To have fellowship and communion with the holiest holiest God with the Father Abba Father we have communion with him isn't that beautiful and as we as we commune with him as we fellowship with him he cleanses us he cleanses us and he gives us his heart he gives us what to desire he imprints his nature in us we become more and more like him and as we spend time as in his presence when we go out people begin to see him because we carry his nature and in everything that we do as we live in obedience to his word the more we look at his word the more we become like him and then people begin to say there's something about you I can't put my finger on it. (laughs) But there's something about you that makes you stand apart. Unbelievers will begin to notice the glory on your life and they'll start to question and desire what it is that you have. And that's how we bring more people into communion with the Father. That's how we bring more people into fellowship. We can't save people. We can't bring the ministry of reconciliation with God. If we ourselves are not desperate and are not hungry to be constantly reconciled with him, to be constantly in communion and in fellowship with his presence, I'm praying that God stirs that up in us, that we begin to press into his presence, that we begin to long as the deer pants for the waters, so our souls long for him. We need to press in, friends. We're not visitors. We're not guests. We are children in our father's house. We are children in the presence of God. And he says, hey, come in. 
jump on the couches, <laughs> come into the main bedroom. Come in, come close. I don't need you to be self-aware or conscious or all of these things. I just need you to receive the spirit of a child and understand that I'm your father. I've redeemed you. I have called you by name. And he understands what it is we need when we enter his presence. He understands what it is we need to be freed from and delivered. And he breaks all those chains. Just like he tore the veil. The chains are broken. The yoke of bondage is broken in his presence. There's freedom. There's freedom. There's freedom. There's freedom in God's presence. I just I just want to encourage us to press in because there's so many things as children of God that we struggle with or even so many things that God wants to give us in order for us to set others free. But until we can come in and press in, we will never experience we, we will never experience a beauty, a love, a glory that surpasses everything that we've ever known. And the beautiful thing is that there's more. <laughs> Just when we think I've I've seen enough of God or how can he get like more more mind blowing than this he does he does and that's why he keeps saying press in don't be satisfied with the outer courts you're no longer you're 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 no longer bound by that law you have free access into my presence we have free access into his presence. Sometimes I just want to sit here and let that sink in. And let it sink in and let it wash over me. Isn't it beautiful to be pursued by the creator of the galaxies, the maker of heaven and earth? The earth is his footstool. And yet he chooses to dwell in us. He chooses to say you are temples. I will put my spirit in you. And there's a sermon by um, Corey Russell where he's just talking and describing this whole, you know, phenomenon that the Holy Spirit lives in us. And he says, you should be grateful that there isn't steam blasting out of your nostrils right now. And that your head isn't exploding because the intensity of his power that we carry divinity because of the blood of the lamb and we're not <laughs> internally combusting <laughs> is a miracle in and of itself. It's so beautiful because there's so many mysteries he wants to reveal to us. There's so much he wants to give to us, knowledge, wisdom, insights, revelation of him. If only we would press in, if only we would press in into the holiest of holies, the most holy place. It's a beautiful place. And, and there are times where I don't feel like pressing in. <laughs> Shocker. There are times when I'm like, I just want to say my cute little our father who art in heaven and call it a day. I don't want to think too deep. I just want to, you know play oceans and just you know float around and then call it a, just it's a wrap but he says mm -mm. sis it's I I'm calling you deeper I want you to press in I want you to press in and I, I'm not doing this for anyone I'm not I'm not doing it for other people I'm doing it because I know what he's delivered me from. I know how he's kept me. He's kept me. 
I know that he's kept my mind. I know that he's kept my family. I know that he's shown up in miraculous ways. I know him. And I know that the things that he does, these miracles, these answered prayers, those are just a fraction of what he wants for us. Those are just him giving us life in abundance here on earth. But the greatest thing that he can give us is more of him, more of his presence. And and he he hopes that as his children we can move past the the place of asking because it's okay to ask. And we should always ask because if we ask we will receive. But he wants our desire to trans- transcend a prayer list. He wants our desire to be fixed on him. He wants to rip up our prayer lists and give us himself and give us his presence and give us a revelation of eternity. And and that's such a beautiful thing. You know, it, it frees me it frees me it sets me free thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode friends um i'm so excited that you came and you listened especially if you made it to this point right here in the podcast thank you so much i pray that you encounter god and begin to receive deeper and newer revelations of him is newer a word new new or newest i don't know (laughs) but (laughs) new revelations of him and that he would just fill your heart and flood your life. Just fill your field of vision so that all that you see is him. You just, yes, like all I see is Jesus. Ha! That that revelation will, will set you free. It will break chains. And then, hmm, (laughs) I don't know why I hesitated, but there's something I've been praying about. And it's that I could not only enjoy this on my own, but I could also... I'm trying to be careful with how I say this because I'm not doing it for people. But in essence, I do want other people around me and those who God has called me to, to experience his glory to its fullest. And that's what he's done. He's entrusted us with the ministry of reconciliation to reconcile the lost to him and also to encourage the saints build each other up but yeah thank you so much for tuning in it's a wrap this is it this is it we we are wrapping up right here um bye